Hello everyone, I'm Jessica Carvat and I'm a vegan women's health coach and menstrual cycle expert and I'm excited to share with you today why period pain is not normal and how you can reduce it. Keep watching. Today I want to speak about something that a lot of women struggle with and a lot of women don't know how to deal with and how to reduce it and a lot of women think it's normal and that's it for the rest of their life and what I'm talking about is period pain. Now, you might not have period pain and lucky you and you might be one of those people who struggle with period pain like I did for many, many years in my life. My period pain was unbearable to a point where I had to take a lot of pain medications. I had to lie in bed and I would not only have heavy painful periods, but also very heavy periods. And so for the majority of my life, I would just deal with it. I would just be like, that is it. That is my life. I will always have painful periods and they will always impact me once a month. And that's just what it is. Now, long and behold, I learned that you can reduce your period pain and eventually even completely eliminate it. Now, I want to make very clear that this episode is general advice. If you need more one-on-one -on -one support, I can help you with that. This is general advice that can be helpful, but please do not take this as individual advice, okay? Please keep that in mind. So when it comes to period pain, we have to also understand that this is often caused by an imbalance in our body, especially a hormonal imbalance. I know that doctors and gynecologists might tell you it is what it is, you can't change it, and here is birth control to help you with that. Now, obviously, you know my opinion about that birth control is not the solution to it all. It can, in many rare cases, in a little rare cases, birth control can be helpful, but for the majority of women, it can actually cause more harm than good. Again, here, keeping in mind that everyone is individual, everyone is going through a different journey, so I don't want to generalize it, but for the majority of women, it can cause more harm. So when we have period pain, it can be caused by many different factors, which I will not go into in today's episode. I will speak on the things that you can improve in your daily life, which will or can reduce your period pain. The first thing is you want to pay attention to the food that you eat. Who would have thought? What's really important is that you focus on reducing any inflammatory food in your diet. If you're not yet vegan, anything that you're eating from dairy, meat, eggs, or other animal products, these can cause inflammation in your body because they're not meant for us humans to consume, especially not in big quantities. Dairy is super inflammatory. And so especially if you consume dairy, it can increase inflammation in your body and that can cause period pain. So you want to focus on eating a lot of anti-inflammatory foods, anything from very good omega-3 sources, again, plant-based sources such as chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds. These are really great omega-3 sources because the truth is is that the majority of people get way too much omega-6 than omega-3 and so we want to balance the ratio out by making sure we get enough omega-3 in our diet as well as any other other anti-inflammatory foods which are very rich in antioxidants so antioxidants you can kind of look at colorful food, right? So vegetables, fruits, anything that is very colorful is usually very rich in antioxidants. And obviously I'm talking about real food. I'm not talking about dark chocolate. I mean, dark chocolate is good. I, want, I, want, I wanted to say like dark brownies or candies that are colorful. Obviously that is not <laughs> gonna help, but I'm talking about real food that is colorful, is usually anti-inflammatory and can really help as well. So that is one thing that I would recommend is just paying attention to reducing inflammatory foods and um, increasing as many um, anti-inflammatory foods into your diet. The second thing is, believe it or not, if you do have digestive issues, they can be related to your period pain too. Because unfortunately today, a lot of people have digestive issues. It has kind of become the epidemic of today's society that a lot of people have IBS or um, SIBO or just bloating in general. And many people say, this is normal. This is okay that I'm bloated every day after I eat, but it actually is not. That is a sign that there is some type of imbalance going on, some type of inflammation going on. 
and it might be also be a sign of not a good uh, gut bacteria. So we want to look at making sure that you have enough good gut bacteria because we have a lot of bacteria in our body, right? Especially in our gut and we need it. We need a lot of the, the good bacteria to help us survive and to help us really give us the nutrients and the vitamins and all of that that we need to be healthy. And as an example, if you, if you take antibiotics, it will not only kill the bad bacteria, but it's also going to be killing your good bacteria. So looking at maybe your own history and asking yourself, hmm, did I take a lot of antibiotics? Did I, am I taking the hormonal birth control pill? Because that can also cause imbalances in your gut. Do I have a lot of stress? What am I consuming on a daily? Because if you eat a lot of processed food, a lot of sugar, uh, that will also contribute to your gut bad gut microbiome. So you want to really pay attention to all of the things that are happening in your daily life and how your digestion is reacting. So in order for you to have a good gut microbiome, you can take probiotics or eat probiotics as well. Fermented foods are really good, um, such as sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, uh, tempeh is really great as well, and prebiotics as well. You can, you know, take them or you can eat prebiotics as well. So these are a couple of things that you kind of want to pay attention to and uh, and a lot of people are not paying attention to you or think it's, it's normal. So definitely those two things are connected. And so making sure you have a good uh, gut microbiome is very, very important. The third thing is balanced nutrition. And what that means is when I first went vegan, I didn't know what I was doing. And my majority of my food contained mainly carbohydrates, not the bad ones, but more of like complex carbohydrates. And I was missing out on a lot of protein and healthy fats because I thought fats are the enemy and I didn't think protein was important because I thought I was getting enough of it in through complex carbohydrates which was not the case. So you have to pay attention to making sure that your meals are balanced. So when you're vegan, making sure that each meal has some complex carbs, some fiber, some protein, and some fat. This way, the way that the, the food is going to be absorbed in your body is very balanced. It's gonna balance your blood sugar and it's not gonna cause, cause those spikes. And obviously you're getting all of the important nutrients in that your body needs. Your body needs protein, your body needs the healthy fat for women especially. I actually recently talked to a friend of mine who told me she went on a diet and she went super low fat and I was like, no, don't do that because she was freezing her axe and, and it was important that she was getting enough fat and that is another thing that you know a lot of women think fat is the enemy, which is not, as long as you're eating whole food fats like nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil is great. Even sometimes getting in some coconut oil, even that's more of the side of saturated fat, that still can be, can be very beneficial, especially if you feel like you're not getting enough oil or fat into your diet. The next thing is movement. And here with movement, we can look at it in two ways. On the one hand, movement is extremely important to have a healthy body, to have a healthy system, to balance out your hormones, to balance out your blood sugar, all of those things. But too much movement can also do damage, right? So when I talk about movement is to get regular movement in. If you're new to moving your body in any kind of way, even just going on a walk, a couple of minutes a day, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day is a great start. If you already are working out a lot and you feel like you're struggling with period pain or any other imbalances, kind of looking at, is there a way I can reduce my intensity of my workouts some days here and there and do lighter workouts like yoga and Pilates, for example. Because again, movement can edit stress, which is something that I'm gonna discuss at the end of the episode as well. Excess fat is another thing. So the problem with hormonal imbalances is that a lot of women have excess estrogen in their bodies. So what that means is through that excess estrogen, there are imbalances that are happening in the body and the body cannot detoxify itself from the excess estrogen that is accumulating in the body. And actually, if you have extra fat, that can also produce estrogen. So not only if you already have excess estrogen, does it impact your body, but if you're holding on to extra weight, if you're holding on to extra fat, that can also produce more estrogen, which can create a vicious cycle of 
your hormonal imbalances. So yes, weight loss is important. I'm not speaking about being extremely thin and skinny. I'm speaking about if you've been holding on to the extra 10 or 20 pounds, the weight loss can be very, very beneficial and helpful because it can help with period pain reduction. And then the next thing is endocrine disruptors. Unfortunately, endocrine disruptors are everywhere today. And what are endocrine disruptors? Endocrine disruptors act like hormones in the body, but are not hormones, which means that your body can think that even though this is not a real hormone, it can still act like a real hormone, which can cause more imbalances in your body. As an example, plastics, BPA, will be interfering with your normal bodily hormonal functions. So when you're consuming out of plastic bottles, when you're consuming water out of plastic bottles, when you're heating up in plastic containers, when you're storing your food in plastic containers, that plastic can enter into the water, into the food, and you can ingest that or eat that or drink that, and it can cause hormonal issues in your body. Other endocrine disruptors can be beauty products, anything that you're putting on your hands, on your skin, body lotions, uh, the makeup that you're using, the hair products that you're using. There are so many chemicals in those products that will interfere with your normal you know, hormonal system in the body. Uh, cleaning products as well. Right, so the list goes on and on and on, but these are things you do want to pay attention to. I think the easiest things to reduce are things like plastics, scented candles, perfumes, all of that are toxins that will enter your body and can create a hormonal, I don't want to say hormonal damage, but hormonal imbalances that you want to pay attention to. So reducing those endocrine disruptors can make a big difference. And honestly, guys, as the last thing that I want to mention is stress will always have the biggest impact on your hormonal health, believe it or not. And I think I want to really distinguish between types of stress because some people experience physical stress. They know that there is stress. They have so many things going on in their life that they can barely sit down and actually breathe. And then there's also emotional and mental stress. People who actually create the stress themselves in their bodies. They might be struggling with their mindset. They might be struggling with their thoughts. And because of that, that creates additional internal stress, which will have the same effects on the body as if you had physical stress. So it's very important to distinguish between those two things because sometimes we think, oh, I'm not stressed because I don't have a lot of things going on outside of me. But if you do a little personal inventory with yourself and you ask yourself, how am I actually feeling? Maybe you are stressed, but it's more mentally than anything else. And so what happens is when you're stressed, your body will produce the stress hormone, right? Your body is gonna produce the stress hormone, which when your body produces the stress hormone, your body will have a harder time, again, detoxifying your body from excess estrogen. So when that happens, estrogen dominance is very common. So you, what you see in women with high stress levels is that estrogen is usually high and the progesterone is low. And because of that, there are many hormonal health things that are coming up. Now I have a list of a lot of symptoms that can happen if you have high or low, if you have low progesterone or high estrogen. Can be, especially when it comes to low progesterone, difficulty getting or staying pregnant, breakthrough bleeding during the second half of the menstrual cycle, PMS or PMDD, menstrual migraines, heavy menstrual flow, irregular or more frequent menstrual cycles, bloating in the abdomen, swollen, painful breasts, heavy bleeding, breast tenderness or cyst, and I'm going into the estrogen dominance. These are very deeply connected, so you will see that the, the symptoms are very similar. PMS, fibroids, endometriosis, menstrual migraines, moodiness, frequent meltdowns, depression, weepiness, mid-cycle or ovulatory pain, brain fog. So you will see that a lot of women have both. They have low progesterone and they have high estrogen levels, okay? So this is really important to look at if you do have any of those symptoms. This is not for you to, you know, be like, oh my God, now I have high, high estrogen levels. Now it's going to stress me out even more. It's more for you to have that awareness because these symptoms are very common in a lot of women. But with these symptoms, knowing that you can change a lot of things, right? So this is not about me stressing you out even more. It's about you having that awareness and asking yourself now, okay, I do feel like the stress that I'm having in my life is causing me to feel sicker 
to not feel great, to have all of these symptoms that are not making me feel good. And so the most important thing is working on that stress. And if you feel like you do need some support, obviously we have the Plentiful Goddess program within the Women's Academy of Transformation that I think will be the best program for any woman who feels like you can really relate to everything that you know I just talked about in this episode. Because ultimately there are a lot of things that can be done, <clears throat> but if you feel like you need that individual support to help you, with specific symptoms or with specific things that are going on, I'm very happy to help out. So all you just have to do is apply with the link in the show notes. I'm very excited to connect and see if the Plentiful Goddess is the right fit for you. But that is pretty much it. I hope that you enjoyed this podcast episode. I hope that it was helpful for you in some kind of way. If you have any additional ideas on episodes, I'm very excited to hear from you. But that is it. Sending you so much love and take care. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I really appreciate you. If you liked it, it was helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below. Give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.